after this one. Uh, we're going to get access to one that's not normally open to the public if we can hurry up down here after. That is a very small gap. You get a picture. Thousand dollars. As I promised you, you will see the best carving ever, the best colors, right? And by the way, all these colors are original. We, the Egyptian administration, didn't color anything, didn't add anything. This is the uh, original colors. According to the writings, this is about 2,000 years old. But as I said, the writings are not credible source. So my guessing that this temple is like more than 20,000 BC or older than 20,000 BC. Many years, and uh, here they accuse the Coptics of You see up here the winged serpent. You see that? The winged serpent moving across, and then you oh, always yeah. see like the hangman card. Yep. Uh, you see the double wings. Yep. Uh, we have a very interesting depiction in the boats going from the nevis between the stars. It's similar to the deuces, too. It kind of reminds me of, you know, the name of the, yes. the top of the caduceus. Absolutely. And this is just like it says in the Bible with the seraphim, the winged serpents, the serpentine beings that possess those abilities and energies. Yes. And over here, you see that one serpent is uh, giving off energy out of its mouth. And there the boats are moving between the stars again, that are transportation. But over here, it's very interesting. Look at this. We see the two rods coming for the polarities we see the keys of life um, just starting to hint at what things are contained here behind us we see a good explanation or illustration of one of these Ark of the Covenant like boxes that Timothy was pointing out and they're using the gravitational field of levitation right there yeah, I got the whole the whole energy see how it's going up above his head and under it and then around the actual box the actual field itself. Wow. So that's when it's like activated. And then on the other side of the door, do you want to? Yeah, no, on the other side of the door, what's interesting about this also is you see the grounding the staff or the rod being placed there. Now, what were you saying about the rod? Well, the rod, I mean, could be. I mean, depending on how it's being used, it's either being used to, you know, to plug it in, to move the things, or it's, you can literally drop it against the thing to, to, to ground the electricity so you don't shock yourself. And this over here is where the mana or the shamana would have been stored. And this was very important, this Ark of the Covenant-like device. And we know the Ark is not a Hebrew story per se. It's an Egyptian story, the Ark of the Contract. And what's also interesting about this is who is carrying the ark, right, Timothy? Yeah, I mean, the, so, the, you know, in traditionally, within the Hebrew tradition, it was the Levites who were in charge of the ark. And this is, in fact, where the term Levitation comes from, levitation. And, and the ark itself, this is where we get the term ark for, with the, within electricity. So, because they're all, they're all connected with it. Beautiful. It should be noted that on many of the ancient temples we'll visit, that even when we go over to Edfu or Abu Simbel, we'll see this ark being contained, making giant blocks and temples being levitated. We'll see boats levitating, and sometimes you'll see those two rods that they're holding, like a positive and a negative charge, manipulating a field of force that moves around and levitates these. But JP, 
what are your thoughts on this? Do you get any impressions? Yeah, when, with the rod, I'm sensing that it's actually also got something to do with bringing the materials that are being levitated back into full mass within this reality, three-dimensional space, linear time. It's almost like the vibration um, of the you know, energy field that was being used just across the other side of the door is causing the material to temporarily lose mass. And I feel that this rod has something to do with putting it back into matter and to form as it is standing now. Well, and, and keep in mind too, so this, this box, I mean this, this box, which was basically a, a natural capacity, capacitor that built up electricity, when, when you put the white powder in it, which was a superconductive substance, it just produced a, an intense amount of electricity. Uh, but it also, that's what stimulated the, uh, this weightlessness. So, so this rod, as was correctly pointed out, would be used to direct that current. By the way, this is famous Salam. Salam. people like Salam. to call this melting stone. They believe that these staircases melt away. But it was actually a video with two of his um, was was it hydrochloric acid. acid. Yeah, yeah. yeah in, in reality, this is just worn down from so many people walking over it ah. over time. Yeah. We get I thought it was another stairwell, though. I mean, yeah. A big one. There's multiple la layers. Yeah, maybe. A little bit more dangerous. So we need, al you know, alchemically, you need acid to help um, to help uh, extract the mana from things, the, uh, the, the white powder from things, and uh, it is not improbable that they would have spilled it. They, they used to cut stones, like pins and to engrave some of the stuff. You know, like, like, yeah, they could have dumped it down the stairs for sure. Yeah, I like, I like that. Uh, we should get to the crypts. I'm yeah. seeing processional ceremony sort of filing slowly down. crypts we're about to take you down into, they were secret. This was a university. This was a place of great power and significance that you could learn about. We will, we will this. We will, yes. Yes, yes, yes. After this one. Uh, we're gonna get access to one that's not normally open to the public if we can hurry up down here after. That is a very small gap. Want to go right or left? Left to the light. Okay. Okay, bro. Yeah, okay. Whoo! See the energy. Yeah. Feels. Being generated by the doorways yeah. with the vibration of Hathor, which is representing the sound and vibration. Moving in, look at this multi-dimensional aspect, like the geom geometrical keys to the universe, and we have it being generated like a field, just like JP I, is saying. Do we know what this means? It has something to do with harmonics, or yeah, I'd say like cymatics. Cy cymatics, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It looks like it. You got all of the significant patterns that turn up. Yeah, we have the feather. Yeah, denoting yeah. the nation. Four the ethers. Watch your study. Watch your study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, keep in mind how dark it would have been in here. Yes. You know, I mean, we, we have the fortune because we got some light going in here, but it, uh, you, you have to wonder. It's not like they could just reflect light in here like a mummy movie. I mean, it was. Yeah. And you couldn't, you couldn't burn a torch in here very long because then you'd get all kinds of uh, soot all over the ceiling, and you'd also. Uh, be burning off your oxygen, so you need to. They had to use something else to light it in here. What would be your guess? Well, I mean, it, it adds some weight to the 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 idea of these potentially being light bulbs, right? Because if you had some sort of uh, ever burning lamp or. Uh, uh, 
you know, something like a light bulb, and you'd be able to see around in here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I want, I want you to keep a few things in mind when you look at this. So first things first, when you look at this giant being over here, you're going to notice there's like a double version of them. You see that? The two faces, the second outline around them. Mm -hmm. Some might say this is like the Atlantis story. So you see there's like some giants. And you might also say this could be the dynastic Egyptians kneeling before them, wanting to receive a great gift. So, yeah, you could look at this and say this is a light bulb. But it's also a lotus bowl. Right. And this is a field of energy. So the serpent changes. I want you to notice something. The bends in the serpent are going to change. They're going to change from this wall and how they are to this wall and these various processes. You're going to see this figure in the middle. This is a very significant figure in the, Egypt, uh, in the Egyptian pantheon. This is Hay, and he represents eternity or immortality. And something these two gentlemen can tell you all about is we see this way, the raising of the Jed pillar. Now, we might say that traditionally this is the spinal column of the Kundalini being uh, risen in Osiris. And we see the serpent bends again changing as it's being received. And over here, furthermore, you see the vibrations of Hathor. Well, look over here in this sort of Atlantean story of the pre-dynastics rising up. We see over here like a figure that you find over in our cosmogony and our story that we find even at Hermiopolis. There's different creation stories and cycles. Look at this reptile-like race or frog-like race with these sculpting blades, almost as if it's sculpting creation. And again, we see the pillar has risen more. These folks are sharing knowledge. They're growing. And we see this resonance, this vibration opening up. We see the falcon. We see it transpiring. And again, the serpent raising his consciousness from the lotus, and it's moving and shifting. Uh, where do you guys see this unfolding into our greater progress in the mysteries? Well, I mean, of course, there's the, the individual unfoldment, you know, of our own awakening to this greater uh, gnosis or, or, or consciousness that one could argue even a consciousness field within the universe that we live in, uh, but the greater awakening of civilization itself, too. Do, do, you, do, you, uh, do you guys want to move down there also? And it, when you see this, do you see anything in the esoteric initiatory process? Go ahead, JP. Uh, well, I think that uh, one of my uh, interests in this is how we exist within physical matter, but it doesn't mean to say that there is not a, a greater hierarchy or order of intelligences or beings that have an interest in and um, help shape this reality, which is what I'm seeing here. You know, the beings are feeding in a controlled, seemingly a technological way, but I don't necessarily feel it's technological, but they're feeding higher consciousness in stages because we're creatures of evolution. Everything evolves. And I feel that the pillars, the feeding of higher consciousness through the lotus is about staging and acclimating humanity and, you know, all manner of other beings here into um, receiving gr the full spectrum of reality. And that takes time. So that's my feel when I take, uh, you know, the whole of the, the two sides of the walls in this crypt. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I want you guys to keep in mind one thing. At the top of these rattles, there are stargates that are being opened to the gods with the sound resonant vibration of Hathor. And don't forget the stars on the ceiling itself. I mean, oh, my see, gosh. We, we are, Look at this, we guys. Are literally... Look at this, guys. Uh, I mean, even though we're down deep in the crypt, uh, you know, we're, we're still pointing to the, the origin above us. And look, look up here as well. Here is the dualities that have been awakened, like you see the double-headed serpents, but we see the messengers that just before you hit the stars that we found that Timothy was pointing out, we see the vibration, the resonance, the awakening that has taken place at this gateway. And remember Muhammad was saying how you found a plural, plurality of people. We see these people that when we look over here have been awakened and there's this movement. This is, this is the text that explains the awakening regenerative process of the alchemy we examined yesterday here. This is the story of how the mysteries came to be. 
There's another one of those arcs. Yeah, those arcs, those tablet boxes, you know. It's, it's, wow. there's, a, there's a smaller version yeah. of it, but so yeah. here you have the box and then and there you have the rods, the rods. The rods yeah. You know, so they're, they're they're always shown in together because they work they in work conjunction together, with yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah. Just as uh, in the story of Moses, you, you had the ark filled with the manna, but uh, it was Aaron's rod was always associated with it as well. So this is the same thing. Interesting. I didn't notice that the uh, rod hadn't been put <coughs> to the floor yet at this point. The uh, and it's interesting that these two are going together, like you pointed out. So there must have been the key is the resonance, the electricity, uh, and the frequency opened it up. Yeah. The rod of set, the rod of Hathor. Switch it down. Take it back. Oh. Anything for uh Anything for it, brother? So when, when you've done taking your picture, Tim, you want to explain exactly what you think is going on here. Yeah. So here we so here we actually have four of these boxes, right? These arcs. And look how the energy is emanating, is connecting with them over to this here. I mean, and it's literally showing the energy coming from the boxes. So. Yeah, it couldn't be more clear, really. Look at this. Yeah. Tracing across, arcing through, and then you've got this beautiful kind of pattern around here, which we were thinking might be representative of the cymatics, the sacred geometry of resonance. And uh, above it, you've got clearly what looks like a depiction of energetic uh, arcs or waves. And then a series of uh, series of boxes, which could be arcs. You almost have a... Uh... Yeah, these uh, pillars at the top that are like both of Jack and the Masonic traditions. Yeah. There's the light bulb glyph. Uh huh. Yeah, you've got to check that out. It's amazing. The light bulbs are down there. Right? Yeah, if you want to see the light bulbs. The light bulbs? Yeah, the light bulbs are down there on that side, on the far side, both sides of the wall. Both sides of the wall. Can't miss them. That's a little bit of color. Oh yeah. A little bit of red going on. Yeah. What's going on down here? Just more yeah. more funny business. More funny business. This one's nice because business. it still has the red color. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's the only one that I've seen that's got the coloring on it. Yeah. Oh, there's a little bit here as well. Do you and I think this could be like when you leave when you leave from this section, this could be like the movements that we see at Edfu almost like the beginnings of the rising up of the peoples that move almost in this Atlantis star where they're moving up in their progression to getting to that process of awakening and rediscovering. Because Osiris has got this energy chain around him. And it's yeah, he certainly does. It's around like, his head. And look, it's this giving, the gift. And the, the, people are, some giving. the people are moving towards the others, and that's what the rediscovering happens. I think this is how they were discovering it back from the antediluvian or pre-cataclysmic yeah. folks that were here that were deified and made into gods. And then moving back up, they got the knowledge from them and rediscovered the mysteries on this side. This is where the mysteries moved in to the most profound of their awakenings and abilities. Oh, sorry, Brad, mate. Come on down. You're fine, Dan. Yeah. We got you. You all good? Yep. Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Watch your step. You got it? Yep. All right, buddy. Nice to see you soon. You're done. No, waiting for that. You're waiting. Okay, okay good. Oh, wow. Okay. You first. <laughs> okay, camera first, yeah? I'm going to get it from down here. Yeah. 
going through a very tight space. Yeah, don't feel my ass. I feel like you're being born again. Oh, I really do. Okay, let's turn this around. Uh, yeah. This is the ultimate secret to the Stargate. Thank you. Wow, dude. This is profound. Oh. All the netters. Look at this. All the netters lying down the walls. And this is the ultimate secret at the top of the crypts. And it's up, up, up above on purpose. And so look at this. Above Hathor, which is resonance and oh, vibration, wow. there's the gate. Oh, wow. Opening it up. Tim, so, pro so profound, brother. Dean. Look so at this. Look, Look at, at this, this. Bro. This is the consciousness rises from the lotus. Here's the gift of the nethers with the energy. And look at this. Oh, wow. All the nethers leading up. And look what's at the top. This is the top crypt. This is this had, we haven't been able to get access to this before. There's Hathor uh, with vibration resonance. And look what's up there. The oh, gate. Yeah, the gates. Here's the keys to the stargates, the mysteries. Here's Hathor. Wow. And then above are the gate. You see this? Yes, yeah, incredible. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. We need to take a, uh, let's take a selfie of the three of us too. Yeah, dude. Yeah. This is the famous mounting staircase that people post. Right. Oh, yeah, look at it. Look over here. Yeah. But really, there's more boxes. Here. Probably just worn down, yeah. You can imagine it's probably just worn down. More boxes being used. We were talking possibly 500,000 years. Exactly. It's a lot of footfall. Interesting. Obviously, it was well used. You will see depictions on the right and the left side. The right side, they are going up to <laughs> I found muff cuts up here too. Uh, not muff cuts, but the white cakes. Yeah. And I've uh, also seen, you know, see more depictions of the resonance. Uh -huh. here's, here's, he's carrying two of those boxes. Yeah. Arcs. Gates, huh? Yeah. Are those sarcophagus or gates? Or these boxes, like they're the base statues. Batteries, yeah. yeah. Well, stones is their calling here. Alexander. Yeah. Yeah. here to the right <laughs> and we make the new discoveries with people like UJ people like Alexander here Alexander what are your impressions it's amazing yeah I'm still processing so still much processing. to take in yeah. as we move towards this part of the building at Hathor's temple here in Dendar you're gonna see one of the oldest zodiacs that is found on the roof back here it's just a replica the original is over at the Louvre in Paris but it's been speculated that this was probably uh, preserved or the call to do so was done by Ptolemy. But it's quite incredible. You see the Egyptian symbolism and how it's found right on the roof up here. It's very interesting. We also see behind that the Osiris story about resurrection, which was probably a funerary room. But check this out. Uh, thank you very much. Watch your hand. Watch your hand. So there was hundreds, if not thousands, of treasure hunters in Egypt a long time ago, from the beginning of the Greek Roman times. So we took about uh, almost 30, uh, 300 BC till 1950 BC, and some now are doing the same, but in illegal way. But it was legal in the last uh, 1,000 years. Uh, especially when Egypt became as part of the Ottoman Empire. Any person can go and get a permission to do some digging and they take what they want. What they find, find they take it. So someone came to dig here in the area, he didn't find anything to take because all the statues, all the light devices were taken. So he looked at this part, this is what we call it the zodiac, and that name is not fair because this is 
deeper and bigger than the zodiac. He cut the corners. Some people say dynamite, the corners maybe. I'm not sure what was the way to cut that block. And he took that block out of the kingdom and he sold that to the French Museum, Louvre Museum. So if you want to see the original one, it's at the Louvre Museum. But I always appreciate what the French did to us. They sent us a copy. Yeah. So they Instead of giving the real thing. Wait, so, so this is this is a copy. So nice, yes, oh my goodness. to make a copy for Thanks. us. I can't believe that they took so the real one. Took the original. Took wow. the real one piece. One piece. Wow. Yes. You, you think they could have made it in beige? So I was dreaming to visit. <laughs> yeah, I was dreaming to visit the British Museum to see the original Rosetta Stone because I was explaining the replica for twenty years. So I made it last February. But I'm dreaming now to visit Louvre Museum because I'm explaining the replica for 20 years also. Okay. So let's hope maybe this September I will go to France. So what is this story? They call it Zodiac. No, this is not fair. Why? Because if we talk about the Zodiac, we talk about one circle only. Here we talk about four circles. The one, the core, and then the surrounding one with the bull, the lamb, the lion, okay, that is the second level, and then these levels like Orion and uh, Pleiades and uh, Sirius, and then that level number four. So we talk about four layers of universe. The one close to us, the one a little bit far away, the one further away, and the one at the edge of the universe. 